Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be discussing how to choose the most appropriate DMX control system for your project. My name is Michael Jardina. I'm the product manager here at Acclaim Lighting. And joining me is John Toby. Hi, everybody. Manager, and Blaine Engel, who's our national sales manager. Good afternoon, everyone. He's going to be moderating the chat and the Q&A. Uh, and to that point, um, please send any questions you have during the presentation to the Q&A module. Uh, and we also have a simple three question poll that you can uh, take and we'll get started. So in the first section, we're gonna discuss what we would consider the first step of choosing a DMX system. And that's uh, determining your channel count. This is a fundamental question that uh, needs to be calculated for every project to offer the best solution. Your channel count will depend on the type of color arrangements your fixture has. So if you have a single color or white light fixture, it will require a single DMX channel per fixture or per group of fixtures. Uh, this is typical of say our linear one product uh, or uh, any other product that requires a single channel of DMX. White lights basically, that's, that's the key here. <laughs> For a dynamic white product, uh, Acclaim products will use two or three channels to control the mix of the white color temperatures. And you can check which mode your fixture uses on the specification sheet or in the user guide for that particular fixture. Uh, our dynamic white fixtures can also be, you know, more commonly known as tunable white. Uh, and we offer several variants of that uh, for our, our product line. So again, single color, we're talking about one channel per fixture, dynamic white, two or three channels per fixture. And then moving on to color changing. Uh, when we have an RGB fixture, uh, it's three channels per fixture or section. Uh, one reason we mentioned section control is because on a pixel controlled product, you may have many small RGB sections within a defined area of that fixture. Um, so it could be a four foot fixture and you have you know, four to eight sections in there that are individually RGB controlled. Uh, when we expand that to a four color fixture, like an RGBW or RGBA uh, unit, we'll use four channels per fixture or per section. And the same pixel rules apply here, but instead of three channels per pixel section, it's four. This four channel setup also applies to our quad spectrum and quad white series. And lastly, our newest color configuration, Spectrum 6, would use six channels of control per fixture. Spectrum 6 uses a mix of red, green, blue, amber, cyan, and lime to get high CRI dedicated whites, dynamic white, and color changing in the same fixture. So looking overall at all these options, we can see that when we're looking at a specification, uh, we can determine, we can count up those channels uh, based on the type of fixture we have how many individual channels it's gonna to require to give us uh, the desired control. A lot of times so, some fixtures may have additional channels for things like a dedicated dimmer or a zoom. Um, most acclaimed fixtures don't have these, but uh, if you run into other manufacturers fixtures, uh, they may have these as well. So you do need to take that consideration into consideration if it's more than just color on a fixture. Let's go, yeah. Individual or group control. Uh, this is uh, very important, um, you know, when we're kind of trying to establish what the aesthetic is of a given job. So uh, Michael mentioned earlier um, about uh, how you would, some linear fixtures, for example, color changing grays, you might want that address per foot. So you have RGBW, 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 RGBW. That would be individual control because um, you're controlling per foot. Or if we had a series of uh, four floodlights, um, like in the graphic here, uh, that's individual control, which allows us to um, apply uh, an aesthetic to each individual fixture. Um, something that's a little bit more common and obviously easier to operate and makes your control system simpler um, is a group control format. Uh, in this format, we've got all the fixtures addressed the same. Um, it allows us to operate them on a single DMX device or a single DMX channel um, and just kind of like simplifies it, you know, for uniform performance. Let's 
slide, please. Yeah. Um, so determining total channel count. Um, you know, this is again, this gets back into that group or individual mode. Um, with individual control, we have to account for all of those DMX channels for every individual fixture that we're using. Um, and so it can add up really fast, especially if we're talking about a product that is mapped or has a like a large amount of pixels. Um, you, that channel count can get really high really fast, and we need to account for that for all of those channels with our DMX control choice. Um, with group control, like I mentioned earlier, um, it simplifies things. It brings it all back into uh, a single group um, for just easier, you know, easier methods of operation. Cool. And uh, Mike's showing kind of like a graphic here. Um, so you can see the patch window that would be like a software based program. Um, and, you know, something that we commonly talk about with DMX control is how many universes do we have? Um, the universe of DMX allows for 512 channels. Um, so in the aforementioned, you know, uh, slide where we had 160 individual channels to operate, um, you know, it's less than 512. We got one universe of control. And one note on that patch window. So software controllers will typically give you that type of interface. Uh, so you can view the fixtures, uh, add them, and note their channel assignments within each universe. So if you do have multiples, you go into that patch windows in some of the more advanced units, uh, and you can see that layout universe over universe. Cool options. So now we're going to discuss some of the specific control solutions you can use uh, from Acclaim Lighting uh, from a basic wall station to some really advanced network systems. So to start, uh, we'll talk about some of the simplest DMX controls we offer. Uh, they're small single gang wall stations, and these are ideal for group control applications. So what we previously talked about where you're doing even large number of fixtures, but you're limiting that control down to, you know, a single uh, operational channel or group of channels. Um, so these are great for really small projects and things where you have a single isolated run of product in a room. Um, so first off, we have the TC1. Uh, and the TC1 is a single, a simple single channel DMX controller. Uh, it's primarily designed for single color and white applications. Uh, we've got four programmable dimming presets. So you can set a level at say 100%, 50%, 25%, and you can attach those all to those buttons one through four on the bottom. Uh, and it's got a full touch interface. Uh, so it's really pretty intuitive to use. I'm gonna kick it over to Johnny as one there, he can show you. Hi everybody. Uh, so just, uh, you can see I got a picture hooked up to this thing. Um, I'm going through my dimming levels. I get some presets in here of different values. Um, great thing about it is, you know, it functions just like a traditional wall switch where you have that full dimming control on DMX. Um, and then you can save that value or just use a simple on and off switch. Um, again, this is the kind of control that's really geared for um, white light or the single channel fixtures, um, you know, on that group control level. So I've got a, one of our cylinder one fixtures attached to it. Um, and with that, let's say you had a bunch of these on a ceiling. This would be an easy way to, the easiest way to operate all of them in unison and have easy, simple dimming control over uh, a group of white light fixtures. Okay. So uh, next up, if you want to take that single channel concept and expand it to some color changing, uh, we have the Art4 Pro, and that's the one in the middle of the slide here. So the Art4 Pro, takes the same touch interface uh, setup, but allows it to be used for three or four channel DMX applications. Um, so it'll work with an RGB fixture, it'll work with an RGBW or an RGBA fixture. Uh, we have the same four programmable color presets and those to note are static colors. So you can set a static red, a static blue, a static green, et cetera, and you can control them from those buttons. The, the other thing it has is some built-in color fade program modes, and you can adjust those using uh, the program mode there, the P button. Um, and it does have a master dimmer as well. Uh, so adds a few more features on from what the TC1 Pro has. Uh, and John can, oh, one other thing, uh, one other feature in this that's really nice is if you have a single roll of, of tape or something that can use a PWM output, the Art4 Pro has a built-in PWM output so you can use that without a standalone driver. 
Uh, so you could actually hook up, you know, 24 volts right into the ART4 Pro, send PWM out to a single uh, roll of tape or a, a similar PWM product. Cool. Um, yeah, so you can see I've got an operational one right here. Same concept, um, scrolling color, scrolling dim um, with the usable presets. So if you've got an RGBW fixture, you can go and save it. Um, you know, applications for something like an ART4, um, it's a really nice commercial wall dimmer. So let's say I've got a piece of art or a sculptural element and I have it lit in RGBW, um, you know, and I want to create a designer color on it. Um, you can do that with an R4. Um, maybe it's Christmas time and I want to easily want to go to my wall switch and make it red. Um, that's very, it's a very user friendly way to operate. Um, and at the same time, it gives you the ability to do those chases if you want to have some simple sequencing. Um, you can adjust the speed at which that sequence refreshes. Um, and we did get a couple questions that came in, um, you know, and I, I think they both apply to the same thing. How many fixtures can you connect to these devices? So honestly, this is unlimited. Um, so as long as you've got RGBW or RGB fixtures, that four channel mode, um, and they're all addressed to the same DMX channel, you can put as many DMX control fixtures um, and have this be the brain on them as you can connect. Um, DMX is separate from power. Um, so you're running the control network out to all of those fixtures. Um, you're running power to all those fixtures. As long as the control network comes back to a single device, um, the number is unlimited because all those fixtures have the same DMX identity, uh, channels one through four. Um, yeah, that's kind of the easy way to look at it. So you're not limited. You're limited by what you want it to do, not um, by how many on the DMX side. All right. And uh, finishing up uh, this list of small group controllers, uh, and to note, these are very affordable controllers. So we're talking about things that are on the very low end spectrum in terms of cost at what we're gonna look at today. So they're, they're simple and they're also cost effective. Uh, so we have the AL uh, Fade 6 Pro. The AL Fade 6 Pro is six DMX channels uh, and it's available for all fixture applications, whether it's single color, uh, color changing or dynamic white. And that's because it's just individual DMX faders. So there's no uh, requirement that, hey, this is one channel or this is four channels. We've got six faders and they can be used for whatever you need them for. Um, we've got, also got six programmable presets. So where our other units had four, this expands out a little bit into six button presets. Those can be either a static color or a moving program with up to 99 steps in that moving program. Uh, and then lastly, you have a master dimmer on the AL Fade 6 Pro. And that allows you to take one of your presets or the set color and just dim everything down together to get a more appropriate level if you need to. And John has one here. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, so you guys can see, this is kind of your uh, a classic analog device. So we have a master dimmer. Um, I've got a tunable white fixture here. So kind of see that I'm going cool white, warm white. And I have analog capability over both of those. So again, um, let's say we had an RGBW fixture, you know, you could go through and make a manual adjustment to your red, your green, your blue, your white, um, all those different color values. And we do have a couple of questions on in terms of DMX cable length. Uh, we do want to clear something up because there is some confusion out there about this. But when you're using a proper DMX cable, which uses RS-485 compatible signal at the right, um, at the right impedance, uh, you can theoretically run a DMX cable up to 3,000 feet. And so we've done that testing reliably in our lab. Uh, we've done it reliably in the field. So, uh, you know, 300 feet is a number that's typically thrown around uh, when we're talking about um, Ethernet or Cat5. Uh, or six, and uh, and even lower limits on uh, normal DMX cable, which is like a thousand to fifteen hundred feet. A lot of people use that. Um, that again is is not based in the spec that DMX is uh, that DMX lives on. So if you follow the spec that DMX lives on, use the proper cable, use proper splitting and isolation, you can get to over three thousand feet of DMX run, and that's a single run, thirty-two devices in a line for that. All right, so moving on to uh, staying in within one to four universes uh, in the controller category is Canvas. 
So Canvas was a result of taking all those things that clients loved about our simple controllers that we just looked at and then adding more options and more flexibility. Uh, our goal is still to keep the interface as simple as possible. So we really wanted to kind of expand on the ones we just looked at, but give you, you know, more power. Um, so the one really neat thing it can do is it can walk you through the setup uh, and pre-program up to 30 presets for you without having to move or touch a DMX channel. So if you have somebody that's not familiar with programming DMX, uh, say an integrator or installer, they can out of the box get some things, uh, get some colors that can test uh, the fixtures with, play around with it a bit uh, to get a feel for how it works. Uh, it features two universes of DMX, as well as two zero to 10 volt outputs. And that's a little bit unique. Uh, it allows you to control white light zero to 10 volt products like our linear one uh, in the same programming and control interface as our color changing units. Uh, Canvas is really ideal for those small to medium sized projects that need more functionality than those simple wall stations, but less than say a full blown software programmable controller. Just I want to touch on that a little bit. Um, so, you know, some of those earlier controls were geared towards a specific type of fixture. Um, with Canvas, it's configurable. So if you've got tunable white fixtures, it works great. If you've got single color white light fixtures, great. RGBW, RGBA, um, the new Spectrum 6, um, all of those are options for Canvas. When you turn it on, you tell it, I've got RGB fixtures that I'm connected to it. And then it gives you those presets that Michael was talking about. Um, on an integration level, um, we've added a couple features that make it really geared towards um, kind of commercial construction. Uh, the canvas has got eight contact closure triggers. Um, so say for example, we've got a master dimmer system, but you know, there's some DMX fixtures in a specific space or you know, for aesthetic lighting on the exterior. Um, and we want everything to be run by one control system. Um, you could use those contact relays from your master control system to play back eight specific shows on the canvas. Um, so, you know, you can have your master control system can turn on um, your lights at night. It can turn on a specific program for the holiday season. Um, all of those things can be done through the relays. Um, and, you know, there's the other element that I don't think Michael touched on yet that the canvas provides is apt app-based control. Um, there's a Bluetooth app, it's free to download. Um, when you pair it with your Canvas, you get all those, all those compatibilities of that touch screen uh, on your phone. So you can select any of your saved scenes. Um, you can even go into the dimmers palette and create looks um, live from your phone through the uh, included app. So just more options for, for programming, triggering things via time clock, triggering via dry contact, um, app, you know, being able to operate it through a mobile app. Um, but at the same time, there is no software attached. So everything that it does, you do it through uh, the app or through the interface on your phone. Yeah, and one other note, uh, Canvas also has ARIA wireless DMX uh, built into it. So it can act as an ARIA transmitter. Uh, this is good for, because of the limits with walls and obstructions for our wireless system, it's good for, say, a single room and the device within the room, but you can easily expand that uh, with our ARIA range extender. So you can put a range extender and expand the signal from Canvas uh, uh, pretty, pretty long, in pretty long distance. And the rabbit hole, see, uh, see a claims webinar on ARIA wireless. That's right. <laughs> Cross promo. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, kind of stepping it up a little bit from Canvas uh, is the ART 500. Uh, we're still in the one to two universes range, um, but the main difference here is programming capability. Um, it features an advanced timeline programming interface, and that's done via a PC or Mac application, and it can control up to two universes. Uh, it also features an intuitive drag and drop calendar for triggering presets, uh, which is great for holiday or special event programming. Uh, one of the main features that ART 500 has all over all the previous controllers we looked at is the ability to pixel map. Uh, so that is to take a group of LEDs and make them appear as an, a single array, which we can then run dynamic con content on for vis visual effects. And so this really kind of takes uh, a, a big jump in terms of programmability and, uh, and pixel mapping, which is, which is a concept that uh, gets used a lot more often in large scale installations. 
So this is about your aesthetic choices, right? So um, I like to look at the Art 500 as that tool where maybe we have 20 fixtures and you want to have a lateral movement where they go like this, where the color chases across them. And, and you know, it's kind of a dynamic effect. Not everybody, not every job calls for that. Um, but when you have clients and opportunities and designs that call for that kind of movement or dynamism, um, this becomes the proper tool because when you step up to using software to program, um, you're able to identify all of these fixtures as specific nodes you know, in a computer, and then you can apply them. You can paint them like with a paintbrush. So if you want to have fades, crossfades, chases, all of those things, you can really start to get into that software and create those dynamic um, aesthetic effects that are yeah, there we go. And so to take a look at the software interface uh, that he was just mentioning, uh, note the timeline feature, which we've highlighted there in blue. That allows you to create scenes and then drag and drop them into the timeline. And you can achieve a granular control of the arrangement and the timing of the lights there in the timeline. Uh, so lights with similar color arrangements like RGBW can share the same built-in effects. The built-in effects window is there on the top right, you can see. Uh, and in the center is the fixture map, which allows you to group all or some of those fixtures into a larger pixel map group and then control them together. So you could grab, say, all those color changing fixtures, apply a single effect, create a scene, and drag it onto the timeline. You could do that multiple times and layer them to create different effects with different fixtures at the same time. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, what you can do on the programming side of things. Uh, so we're going to move on. We're still in the one to uh, four universe range, but we're going to start talking about uh, the Pharos line. So Acclaim carries the Pharos control line, which offers both advanced programming via their Designer 2 software and the ability to create large networked control systems. Uh, the TPC is a one universe EDMX touch control, uh, touchscreen controller. EDMX is DMX over Ethernet in the form of one of the various standards such as ArtNet or streaming ACN. When you pair a TPC with the EXT that you see there in the photo, you gain a couple of really valuable things. You get a hardwire AC input, a hardwire DMX output, and RDM capability. So you can address your fixtures from the designer to software, which is really nice. Um, the, the thing about Pharos that, uh, we're gonna touch on a couple of these things, but the thing about Pharos that is really nice is it gives you the flexibility to expand on systems as needed. So uh, we can connect touch screens to controllers to uh, triggering interfaces and all that can be run off of a single uh, ethernet network, which is great. Basically, if, if there's a way that you want it to operate, Pharos is gonna give you the tools to get there um, with customizable user interfaces. You're not locked into this is what my touch screen looks like. I mean, you can see in the image there, um, it's got a color wheel for color picking, faders, um, trigger buttons, all of those are options. Um, you get the astronomical time clock, um, and then kind of what we're going to hit on some points where you get unlimited integration. So um, ability to connect remotely um, and network these devices for scalable systems, you know, everywhere from this could be simple, um, one universe control systems, all the way up to you know pixel map facades um, that are running you know content and words if that you know is required. So. Yeah, so this is the one universe option. Again, it's just built into the controller, and you can add a hardware DMX by adding that EXT. So if we want to jump to a few more universes, uh, we can go to the Pharos LPC. Um, the LPC can be considered kind of the heart of the Pharos system, and is available in one, two, or four universe variants. Uh, as with all Pharos controllers, it uses that Designer 2 software. Uh, it does allow for pixel mapping. And you can add an optional TPS, which is very, almost identical to the TPC touch panel we looked at in the previous uh, slide, but it doesn't have the controller portion of it. So it's just a touchscreen trigger interface, essentially. Um, the one thing, uh, a couple of things that are unique about the LPC uh, is it's got an onboard astronomical time clock and those eight dry con or eight contact closures, which can be analog or digital. John kind of touched on why those are important uh, for integration purposes previously. Absolutely. And so now with those two out of the way, and those are the more simple controllers that 
not simple, but you know, less universe controllers that Pharos offers. Um, we want to touch on a few reasons why Pharos is an optimum control solution in a lot of situations. So a Pharos system can always be expanded and modified since the backbone of the system is Ethernet. Like a typical computer network, Pharos uses a star topology that links everything back to a PoE switch. The Designer 2 software can see all devices in the network and it can assign them to various functions as needed in the system. So once you're done with programming up, you can remove the computer. Everything that gets stored on the TPC or the LPC or other Pharos device just stays there and runs the program. So that's why I touched on why the LPC is the brain of the system is because it really is driving everything. Um, and then, you know, the touch panels or the uh, module interfaces are all, you know, talking with the LPC essentially. Uh, we can look here at the Designer 2 application uh, and we see several important components. Uh, the timeline in the top left gives you that granular control and advanced scenes that we talked about with the ART 500. You can also simply program static scenes to trigger on power up or via a time of day event. So Pharos gives you those two options. You can get really deep into timeline programming, or you can actually just program a static scene that is simply triggered. Uh, on the bottom left, you have the patch window, and that's for assigning your fixtures like we talked about before. Uh, and then on the right, you have a pixel matrix. And that pixel matrix is where you can group those LEDs into that larger visual array to present the dynamic content video or low res uh, graphics, that kind of thing. You can actually see some of the built-in presets there right above the pixel matrix display. So you have some, you know, 3D rainbow, some things that are in, you know, a different color, a fire emulation, that kind of thing. So one uh, other thing that, oh, go ahead, Joel. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, so, so when you're, wait, w as we're going through all these elements, um, so if we're going to be approaching a project with a Ferris control system, um, a claim is going to be including all the elements that you need. So if you're using a touchscreen or multiple touchscreens, an LPC, maybe a triggering device, um, we would include, you know, uh, all the hardware that you would need to uh, operate that system. Yeah, uh, so oftentimes we get asked for remote access to a control system. Typically they wanna do that from a separate location. So via Pharos Cloud, that's easily achievable. You can control, program, and update an entire Pharos system from a remote location, or you could control multiple locations together. Uh, if say you had a national chain that wanted to ensure all their stores use the same colors at the same time, uh, it features top-end security. There's no additional hardware required, just your Pharos controller. Uh, and for more information and pricing on Pharos Cloud, you can contact your local claim representative. And this is an add-on functionality to a normal Pharos system. Uh, and it's a monthly fee or an annual fee, depending on the, there's different levels, different tiers uh, that you can assign to based on what you want to do with it, whether you just want to trigger scenes or if you want full-blown access to every controller in the system, there's different levels. I just like to add it's browser based. Um, so you do it, this is your phone app for Pharos essentially. You would have Pharos cloud service and through your 4G wireless, you can get on it and make adjustments. Um, this is your, uh, oh, I need to log into my control system remotely. Um, this gives you that unlimited functionality um, in terms of accessing remote access or mobile access um, to the lighting controls. Okay, and so we're gonna move on now to the 10 universe, 10 plus universe controllers. Uh, and these are, these are for larger scale projects, obviously. Uh, Ferros LPC X takes all that advanced functionality of the standard LPC we talked about, the one to four universe version, but gives you anywhere from 10 to 100 EDMX universes. So you can order the LPC X in 10 universe increments, and it is housed in a single 19 space rack, uh, 19 inch single space rack, and has an optional real-time video input. So when controlling large channel groups that may need different content for different sections, LPC is your best, LPCX is your best option. So let's say you had a building facade and the front of the building needs to run one set of content and the back of the building needs to run a, a separate set of content. LPCX would be perfect for that because you do need to break it out into different zones and run, run different content on both zones. Multi-universes, people, this is the scalability. So you had a big job that has 
500 unique pictures of RGBW, and that's 2,000 channels of DMX. Um, you know, you start to get into five, six, seven universes or 30 universes. Um, that's where this becomes the tool that's required. And to look out, uh, look at how LPC or VLC, which we'll talk about in a second, can break out into standard hardware DMX. Uh, we can look at this diagram here. So um, the Acclaim's ArtNet 8 device can take that eDMX from the Pharos device and convert it to eight standard DMX outputs. So from there, you can run DMX directly to your fixtures or to DMX splitters. So since there are eight ports on that ArtNet 8, you just kind of have to divide whatever DMX universes you're using by, by eight, and that's how many ArtNet 8s you'll need. So if you had two, um, yeah, if you had a 20 universe system, uh, then you'd need three of them, basically. Just distribution tools. And again, this is something that will help you with when it comes time to approach um, those projects. You know, this, you're going to get your DMX, just if we're providing DMX control hardware, um, a claim is going to assist with making sure that you have the right distribution hardware to distribute that to uh, the fixtures on the project. And so staying with the, the large scale controller options, uh, the Ferris VLC is a slightly different unit than the LPCX in that it is, it is designed for applications where you have a single large zone to control, like a large LED pixel array or a single building facade or say the side of a bridge. It gives you 500 to 1500 universes of EDMX, uh, a DVI video input, so you can input live content into it and you can store and playback video content directly on the VLC. Uh, overall, the VLC is um, um, the most cost-effective solution when you don't need multi-zone multi control of a project. So if you have a large-scale project, but it's only one set of fixtures that needs to be controlled in a single location, uh, VLC can save you some money per universe, essentially, on that. And you I see, yeah. oh, go ahead, John. No, you're fine. Uh, so what, what I like to point out about the VLC, and this is important to remember, um, this device is geared towards gridded control. Um, let's say we have a bunch of pixel map fixtures and it's arranged on a facade and it turns out to be a perfect grid, right? Um, what this is geared for is turning those DMX fixtures into a bit of a wall, like a low res video screen. So now we have a format of X pixels by X pixels, and now we can program content in it and just pump it through the VLC. Um, like Michael said, um, offering uh, a yeah, much more economical approach to do those high volume, high channel count installations. Um, but we need to have, you know, kind of some rigidity to the framework um, and the arrangement of those pixels. Um, to allow for this to be the func functionally efficient. Yeah, and taking that uh, one step further, uh, which is, an, this is a newer device for Pharos, uh, we have the VLC Plus. So the VLC Plus takes a con concept of the VLC and expands it to up to 3,000 universes of EDMX while adding some advanced media server capabilities. So the media server capabilities allow the user to layer multiple effects and videos on the same screen. Uh, it can play two full HD videos simultaneously while crossfading into two standby videos. You can rotate and resize content, apply custom effects and masks. Uh, the VLC Plus is perfect for the largest of applications like stadiums, theme parks, where you can run entire structures from a single device. So really this takes, um, takes that, you know, I can store local videos and run live content on VLC and says, okay, now I've got a full media server. I can layer, I can add multiple videos. It's really advanced in terms of what it can do uh, from the scene side of things. And again here, same as the, T the uh, LPCX, you just break out normal DMX from these into uh, with our standard uh, Acclaim ArtNet 8 units. Distribution is included, folks. And uh, we wanted to keep it a little bit shorter today than the other ones. Uh, so I think that about covers it for us. It doesn't look like we have any open questions. Uh, so we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have additional questions, you can email us with feedback at uh, webinar at acclaimlighting.com. Michael, Michael, will we have this available, this presentation online? Uh,